Hey guys, today we're going to talk about light in Blender. Um, and so I've been doing some research on how to improve my personal renders um, and how to push the light components in my files in order to make it more realistic and less computer graphic-y. So there are four main things we're going to talk about when it comes to improving your renders with light. The first is volumetrics. The second is depth of field. The third is mesh textures and the fourth is light texture. So the first one I wanted to talk about is volumetrics. Volumetrics, simply speaking, is any kind of particulate that you find in the air. So that could be dust, that could be fog or mist or smoke. And what, that, what a particulate does in a lighting situation is it obstructs your light. If we were to go online, so I have a couple of these already pulled up. And you can see all of these have some element of fog or, or smoke or whatever applied to them. And you can see in this one particularly, um, the sun is pr the strongest light source we have and how it's interacting with the smoke and fog, especially as you move the camera, it's changing the quality of light that's reaching the camera. You can see it here, the sunlight's still coming through, but because there's this thick level of fog, it uh, creates different lighting for the trees. A type of volumetric that I'm sure you're aware of are clouds. When it's a cloudy day, you have a different type of quality of light than you do when it's a sunny day. So I'm gonna show you how to add that to your render. It's pretty simple. And I'll show you with a really exaggerated example first, and then I'll show you how I added it to my scene in order to add a subtle influence to it. So the first thing you have to do is you need a box for your volumetrics or, or fog or whatever to exist in. So I'm just going to add a cube and I'm just going to, I'm going to make the cube about the size of my composition because if it's too big, it's just going to lag my graphics speed. And you see the first problem we have is that the box is showing up as a box and so our camera is not going to be able to get to it. There's a simple fix for that. And that's if you select your cube and then you go up to the object properties and go down and you see in viewport displays there's a box that say display as and for a while i always selected wire bounds is is actually a better display as preference to set so if you click that you'll see you still have the volume of the box but you can see through it okay after you have that box in your scene you have to go over to shader editor and then add a new texture to your box now for this, we actually don't need the principled BSDF, so I'm gonna delete that. Okay, and then once you have um, that deleted, you're going to add a volume, principled volume shader. I'm just gonna add that there. And you can see you have the volume node, and I'm gonna connect that to my material output node. And you can see already you have an aspect of fog in your scene. This is obviously too much of a fog density, so I'm gonna change it a little bit. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to mess with is the density attribute down here. And you can see as I slide that down, you can see all of your scene. And usually I keep that at a relatively low level of density. For this one, I wanna keep it at 0.15. And then the second attribute you have is the anisotrophy. I don't know how to say that whatever that is. Basically that dictates how the light is able to travel through your volume. So you see, as we bump that up, the light's able to, when I bump it up to one, the light's able to get through that volume almost as if there's no volume at all. And so I'm gonna play with that until I have kind of a subtle matting of what I want in my scene. And then you have a couple of other options below the anisotrophy. I typically keep the options below that the same, but I do sometimes change the color depending on what I'm trying to go for. You can see what it does and I'll lower the attribute I can't say just so we can see it a little bit better. You see it's essentially just changing the fog to a tint of your choosing. Now I'll change this depending on, for instance, if I wanted a sun ray coming through, I might want it to be a little bit warmer and bring it to these tones over here, but it's it's up to you. If you're just doing fog, keeping it at its base gray color might be a good option. For this particular scene, the problem I'm facing is that it's covering the entire thing, which kind of makes it a little bit too muddy for my taste. And so I'm going to actually change the cube that I'm using. 
I'm basically just going to edit it so that the volumetrics are simulating the light coming out of a window. So if I move this, kind of align it up with my light source, see how that works. So you can see it's acting differently. The, the volume is basically only hitting this left side of the composition, and this right side almost has no volume at all. Um, and if I just kind of made this a little bit warmer, maybe pinkish in a way, you could see that it, it has just that subtle amount of particles, fake particles in the air, to where your brain kind of adds more weight to the light source. And so right now it's just, I'm not using a window or anything, it's just an area light, but because the area light is going through fog, it feels like there's a ray of sunshine beaming in on my still life here. Before I did this video, I actually played around with it a little bit more, and this is kind of the output I came to. Sometimes when you're muddied in playing with volumetrics, you, you forget what it looked like before. This is what my scene looks like without volumetrics, and then this is what it looks like when I've added kind of my beam of light volumetrics to my scene. Number two is depth of field. Now depth of field is actually an imperfection with cameras. It essentially is the blurriness you see in images, whether in the background or in the, for or in the foreground. And it happens when the light that comes into a camera's aperture and lens, when it focuses into the, the image plane, it isn't able to keep the entire frame in focus. Now that, that varies a little bit depending on, on what your f-stop is, but it's it's an imperfection that you find in cameras, but it's something that has been around for so long that we almost made it a sacred imperfection where you use depth of field in order to further storytelling, to push a composition further. And because of that, Blender existing in a vacuum doesn't need to have depth of field. It's there as an option in order to have that same capability of storytelling. So in order to add depth of field to a render, it's, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is you come to camera, you scroll down past the lens, you have your focal length, and you have depth of fields. Now automatically, see right here, my entire frames blurred out. You have three options that you want to take into account when you're using depth of field. You have the focus object, which is essentially an automatic way to use depth of field. I can just say, okay, I want my skull to be in focus, and then I don't care what else is in focus. The other option is distance. So you can see as you change the distance, the blurriness alters. And so if I wanted to kind of sit here and see what level of blurriness I wanted all of my objects to be in, I could play with that. The third option doesn't have to do with blurred distance but it has to do with your aperture. Now the aperture is basically how much light your camera lets in. And so the smaller the number, the bigger the hole in your lens, and it means the shallower the depth of field, meaning the more space in your scene is going to be blurry. The higher the number, the higher the f-stop, means the smaller the hole in your lens is, and that means less of your scene is going to be blurry. Right now, my f-stop is set at 0.3. In real world terms, you're never going to have an f-stop that goes to 0.3, but Blender's settings are a little bit wonky. Um, but you see as I up my f-stop to 15, basically everything's in focus. And so usually when I want any component of my scene to be blurry, I have to bring it pretty low, bring it to 0.1. So you can see just by doing that, my school's in focus and like even my books which are barely in front of my school are out of focus and if i were to bump that up to 0.2 the books are a little bit more in focus 0.3 the books are almost totally in focus and the school obviously is still in focus so you can see how much the f-stop kind of affects the composition so the next thing that you can do to use light to kind of expand your renders is obviously not just mesh textures, but good mesh textures. And to illustrate this, I rendered a version of my scene with and without textures. So this obviously is the scene without textures, um, and it actually has the same lighting and has the same volumetrics and depth of field as my final render does, um, just without the mesh textures. Now, if we compare this to the one with all the textures applied, you can see that it's not just the coloring that changes in this final render. You can see that, yeah, the, the colors are different, but you have transparency, you have reflection, you have a variation of roughness, you have bump maps that add to the texture, and all of that is just information for light 
to know how to bounce off materials in a believable way. In this video, I'm not going to talk about how to texture an object because it's a its own video kind of thing, but I have done some videos on how to texture objects in Blender, and I'll link to those in the description, and you can use that to further your, your understanding of it if, if you need to. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is light texture. Um, light texture basically refers to the quality of light that's in your scene. So that could be color, that could be intensity. What I'm going to talk about specifically is about obstruction in your light to give it texture. Now I have two lights in the scene and they're both on top of each other. So you can see I have the light there and the light there. And the reason I did that is because I have one light that is simulating obstructions to give variation in the light. And then I have one that's just kind of acting as a fill light. So if I go back and I go to our camera view, and go over here, you might not be able to see it super well. I pulled up two images. One has the light textures applied and one doesn't. So this first one has no light texture applied. You can see the light from the area light we had is evenly distributed across the entire surface of what will be this, this rock face. However, you can see if we switch over to uh, the render with the light texture here, you see you have this subtle variation in light intensity, um, and that's done through light textures. So basically what I'm simulating in my light is some sort of obstruction, whether it's a window pane, whether there, it's a their leaves in front of the window. I'm simulating that in order to give more visual interest to my final composition. Okay, so if we go back to our Blender scene, you can see I showed you how light textures look without any texture applied, and you can kind of see where that correlates to this particular render. So if I were to, this is the light texture, if I were to turn that off, you can see it's, it's kind of that even lighting across the board but then I turn it back on and you have that slight variation. So in order to do that, I'll bring in a different light just, so if I click Shift A, light area, down here in, in your light preferences, you can click use notes. And so that essentially allows you to put a, a pseudo texture on top of your light. And then you can use things like noise texture or, or musgrave texture in order to add that, that light obstruction. So if we go back to mine, you can see this is the setup I use to create that obstruction. So if I were to take this off real quick, you can see it goes back to that even lighting. So all I'm doing, if I undo this and we start over, I just added a noise texture, which is a black and white image essentially, and I added it to the color. And you can see there are slight variations, but it's really subtle. So what I did is I added a color ramp. What I used the color ramp for was I just wanted, I didn't want any grays in my, in my noise texture. And so if you kind of pull these colors close together, it makes that noise texture image basically a black and white image. And you can see after I did that, you get the more clearly defined light and shadow. You can play with it as much as you want. I liked the first one I did pretty well, so I'm just going to drag that back up and add it. So yeah, those are four things that I've learned to do with most of my renders in order to just up the realism of it. There's obviously some post-processing work you can do to this to push it just a little bit further, but I just wanted to talk about some of those light components that really help sell a render. I hope you guys liked it. Please reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. I would love if you were able to like and subscribe. That helps out a lot. Have a great day and blender on. See ya. Bye.